So here I was thinking, okay Jack, you've had quite a solid start to the 2v2 grind up to Champion 2 for Season 10. Surely you can back up the performance from last episode. I mean, it's not too often you're in the net positive MMR after placements too, so it's all looking up from here. I started filming this episode after a cheeky gym session. Mind you, recently I've been double scooping my pre-workouts and it's actually been causing me to crash quite hard. I'd get to around 11am and would start feeling like a slug. Lo and behold, I started filming at around 12pm, but wasn't going to use that as an excuse. I threw myself into a couple 1v1 games and managed to win both of those so I thought I was primed and ready for a 2v2 session. I had a questionable start to my first game. It does take me a while to get my mechanics back in shape. As a result, I've only usually playing the game once a week nowadays. Although conceding the first goal, my teammate and I managed to have quite a few scoring opportunities that weren't just going into the net. One player, I decided to fly up to the ball and try to hit it out towards my teammate. However, they just seemed to stop. I nod off the great pass from my teammate and continue on with the game. Seeing as I went for the ball the second time I threw off a pass off the wall. Already tilted. But as I go to get the mid boost, my teammate takes it, leaving me with no boost to contest the next play. None of that boost, but that's alright. And right at this point in time, I'm trying to actually figure out what my teammate is trying to do. Do I let them be themselves and just go for solo plays the rest of the game? Or do I try and be there to support and be a passing option? It seemed like neither of those options were working. And but inside, I knew nothing was all good right now. Then I just feel like I got really unlucky with this play, with my opponent being there, ready to get the clear that I was looking to do. Having my teammate go on to say this about me. Cool, cool. No biggie. Had somewhat of a toxic teammate. On to the next game. Let's brush it off and get that win back. But would you guess, who would I encounter on the opposing team in my next game? Ah, my teammate from the previous one. Don't get me wrong though, I do love these opportunities to get revenge on my previous teammate. So I went into this one with a bit of fire in my belly. Maybe a little too much fire, Jack. And some more cheeky commentary to add to the collection. In game three, it's like someone heard my prayers. Brownie showed up as my teammate for the next game. And boy, did Brownie deliver on that. There we go. It's on. Much, be much better game with Brownie, feeling like Brownie actually understands how to work with the teammate. Finally securing my first win for the session. Thank you again, Brownie. This next game was an interesting one. I saw the opportunity to go for the ball and my teammates seemed to be upset that I scored the goal. I got it, no problem. I mean, I don't know about you, but that looked like a perfect ball to go for. This next play is actually quite funny. So I completely missed the ball when putting on pressure and then my teammate absolutely gets yeeted out of there. <laughs> Oh, look. No, I'm not forfeiting. As a result, they decide to throw up the forfeit button too, which has been hidden by my face cam. I do apologize about that. We decided to carry out the game and then this happened. <laughs> See, don't forfeit when the scores are tied. You may just get an opponent who will score the double tap of their life on their own net. Oh, it's just toxic people everywhere today. My goodness. And I don't know why, but whenever things seem to be going right for me, they turn to this. Oh. Unlucky. This could cheat my opponent. This was also the turning point in my recording where I didn't seem to really be commentating any of my gameplay anymore. More so trying to work out what my teammate was trying to achieve and vice versa for them trying to work out what I was doing on the field. We were both as confused as each other. Just like right here, deciding to cut right in front of me to take possession of the ball and really do nothing with it. I was so close to being over and done with Rocket League for the day. And to save you watching the next four minutes of gameplay here, we'll skip to the overtime. I'll let Mada take. Mada should. But, uh... <laughs> I didn't even know what to say at this point. But hey, even more feedback for the collection.
Do you know those days when nothing just seems to be working at all, no matter how hard you've tried, even with all the warming up, playing 1v1s, you feel ready to go, but you're just pulling off stuff like this and it's just not working. My gameplay was looking very weird from here. Eh. What is happening? My teammate and I just couldn't click and ended up going down two goals in this game. But I knew something had to change. Clearly, I wasn't commentating enough, did not have the energy, and just needed to fix something. And go back to the basics. I took a little breaky break, collected my thoughts, said hello to my rabbit, and hopped back into the studio. Well, my bedroom. I came back purely focused on my gameplay, no commentary whatsoever, with my tunes blasting. Even though this was a minor adjustment, it really changed the way I played, and I was able to concentrate a lot more. I find that me trying to play somewhat consistently and also commentate my gameplay whilst keeping it interesting is a very hard combination to achieve. So it was a nice little breather just to enjoy the game for what it was. Surprisingly too, I had one of my teammates from a previous game who then actually went on to apologize for making mistakes throughout the game. Maybe I was actually playing somewhat predictable to them. The text chat didn't even stop either, with one of my opponents going on to say this about their own teammate. Like I understand it can be frustrating getting a teammate who you don't really gel with, but this just takes it to another level. This is why I also spend a majority of the season with my text chat off. It just gets too distracting after a while. And again, I found myself in another overtime, but found my teammate was actually on the same page as me for this game. So I wasn't too concerned overall. And luckily they produced this shot. I kid you not, I was a little worried going into this game seeing that one of my opponents from the last game was now my teammate, and my new teammate was quite heavy on the text chat in the previous game. Yet somehow, our playstyles complemented each other quite well, and throughout the game we were setting up some pretty nice plays to each other. I mean, I was even lucky enough to receive a compliment from them. What's going on here? Our team were producing the goods, backing up each other when needed, having faith in each other when going for the passes, and generally was a well-rounded experience in this game. Here I was just vibing to some music sitting in my comfy office chair on a Saturday afternoon and felt like I was actually getting back on track with my competitive session. I will admit, the mistakes were still there, however, I seemed to be in control of the game much more. And to be honest, was the first time that day that I actually felt confident in my mechanics. This then became my second win in a row. Who would have thought just not commentating on my gameplay and listening to music was the fix? Maybe I should try that more often. I decided to throw myself in for one last game of the session sitting at an MMR of 1412. Overall, I wasn't too concerned about getting the win. However, I just wanted to make sure I was performing and contributing to the team where possible. At times I get into the mindset thinking that, oh, I need to maintain the rank of grand champion. But in reality, it is quite a challenge just to get the rank in itself. No matter how much I try, I always find it a humbling experience when first jumping into ranked after taking a little break during the week. I'm not too sure if it's my controller getting old or I'm just not really used to this PS5 controller yet. I've been on it for two years. However, I find my hands just seem to be wanting to go back to an Xbox controller. While there are times where my mechanics are looking flawless, I then find myself getting ready for the work week and missing four to five days of Rocket League. So I'm actually curious to see if I can actually hit Grand Champion through the season, and most importantly, even get my Grand Champion rewards. Luckily, the Easter break is coming up, so an opportunity to get some more ranked wins under my belt. And back to this final game, I managed to make it three wins in a row. So it actually puts the question onto my shoulders as to whether or not I commentate during my gameplay videos for this series. Because at times, I even go minutes without saying anything. And I'm not sure if you prefer sweaty gameplay or a bit more of a relaxed play style with more commentary. Let me know down in the comments what you prefer. So that concludes the second episode for the Grand Champion 2 series. Finishing off the session with an MMR of 1425, so a loss of two MMRs since last episode. If this is your first time watching the series, check back on the first episode here on the left. And if you're keen for some more, click on the right to watch the next episode, when I upload that of course. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're keen for more content like this. I'm Jack and I'll see you next video. Catch up.